Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce. Welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. And this is reading your comments number two because I suck at naming videos. So I am going through and I'm going to be reading all of your guys' comments uh, uh, from starting from the, the video after the last reading the comments. I think that's how I can do this because um, I don't know how to structure this yet. And going through and ringing all of the comments from, like, the previous week, even from, like, previous videos, is a lot. Uh, and uh, I don't know how to do this. So, you guys tell me how to do this. I'm going to try it differently. Um, I'm not going to be showing the comments on the screen this time because I'm, I'm just trying. I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out. If you don't like it, let me know in the comments. Say, hey, douchebag, you're not doing what I want you to do. That's fine. I get it. Like, but just let me know. However, in the spirit of a drink with crazy, this is what I am drinking for this video. This is a, oh God, uh, my wife bought this for me. A four loco melon sour. That is 14% alcohol by volume. Now I've already had beers today. And by the end of this video, I'm going to be trashed. So, without any further ado, there we go. Let's get into reading your comments. Oh, that's sweet. Oh. Mm. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, hello. That's very sweet. All right, starting with why exos are not people. Okay, exos are not people. This is a Destiny 2 video. Uh, Back Down the Revenge says, do this, but with pineapple on pizza. And I told him that you're right. Pizza isn't pizza unless it has pineapple on it. That's right. Pineapple belongs on pizza. Fight me. Let's go. All right, I am says, can we get hands raised from commenters? Y'all are y'all was talking over each other. Let one complete a thought first. I do agree in some parts to your point, uh, more so than the other commentator. The question we should ask is, what is a soul and what is the is its function? So in this video, we were talking about whether or not the exos in Destiny Two could be considered people or not. I argue that they're not really considered people because there is no soul there. They're just a really highly technical computer program operating a mechanical body. And uh, Matt and I were talking over each other a lot. That is something that we are getting used to. When Matt and I converse, you know, we've been best friends for years. So when he and I converse normally, we like, I know where he's going to go with his point. By the time he gets about halfway through it, I know where he's going to go. So I can cut him off knowing his whole point and he can do the same with me. He can know where I'm going to go and then cut me off. And then however, that doesn't make for good YouTube videos. So we cut each other off a lot and we are really working on trying to make sure that we don't do that anymore. Tira Silva. I hate that you have a point since Fellwinter was an Exo Guardian, but his past life was an AI fragment. Again, there we go. Uh, Dead End 4991. Never played the Destiny games. Don't have much interest in them, but I'm still here for the show. Thank you so much, Dead End 4991. Um. Convoy Bebop, who is actually the third member of A Drink With Crazy, but he works in a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff with, like, moderating our Twitch channel and all that. Uh, and we will be getting back to playing Twitch very soon. Uh, we're lining out some games that we all want to play together, but we'll be getting back to that. In Matt's defense, I played Destiny 1 on my own for a little bit in Destiny 2 when it came out. When he told me it got better, that's when I agreed to come back. So, yeah, Convoy Bebop actually had played Destiny before. You'll see if you watch our Exos why exos are not people video. Uh, you'll understand the context. I was saying that Matt got me and Convoy Bebop back in. Uh, Jeremy Mason. Exos may be regarded as people in their own kind. In such a universe with many uh, def 
<clears throat> defining features of life that are so unique, our functions and souls as people can seem primitive to even other advanced race. So to look at another race and deem their uh, and so look at another race and deem their lack of your understanding of the soul as soulless is a stretch. Great topics, though. Thank you so much, Jeremy Mason. And yeah, when discussing this topic, again, I attack it from the soul perspective and whether or not the soul, that living, that that life force that imbues people um, and doesn't just make us this, you know, software running on hardware. And it's really hard to define what a soul is and get into all of that. So, uh, yeah, that that's a tough one to tackle. And sometimes I like to pick topics to cover on the channel that are that are, are, are beyond my scope of understanding, but I do it for two reasons. One, because I think it's an interesting topic to tackle. And two, because maybe by talking about it with somebody else, especially like my best friend who he and I challenge each other a lot, um, especially doing that, I think it will help me to work out my own points and formulate them and become uh, uh, more knowledgeable about what I believe myself. Because even though he's my best friend, he and I don't see eye to eye on everything. We can go back and forth on a lot of topics, um, and he'll challenge me and play devil's advocate on the things that I need him to, and I'll do the same for him. And so, um, yeah, defining a soul and understanding the soul and understanding, like, you know, if we were to transfer our brain scans into a mechanical body, but then we die, is that mechanical body us? Is that mechanical body that has that highly sophisticated brain scan us? Um, I, I don't think so. Because this physical thing here that we feel and smell and touch with um, goes away. And so, yeah, that was... Uh, the, the, those, yeah, that fi just fantastic, uh, fantastic comments there. All right, the next video we are going to cover is the comments from the Ripaverse, Yaira. This is the Yaira theory crafting video. Oh boy, we had we had some comments on this thing. Xavier Guzman says definitely 100% not going to rule 34 search this at all. No, not one bit. No, sir, not at all. Xavier Guzman, you rule 34 searched Yaira immediately after you typed that or possibly while you were typing it. And that's weird. But you absolutely rule 34 searched Yaira. You 100% did. I don't believe you. You absolutely did. Back down the revenge. Back again for another comment. Says definitely a villain type. Um, oh, there, there, and there was a whole exchange here uh, with uh, uh, Verhoeven, uh, uh, 1980. Um, yeah, and uh, there was a whole exchange here that was really fun to have. Uh, and then uh, Charlotte Marsh got involved as well. But uh, we're really talking about Yaira. Is she going to be this bad girl? Is she going to be an angel of a person? Is she going to be a girl from the streets with a little bit of an edge to her? Really talking about Yaira's personality in that comment section. So back down the revenge. Thank you so much for commenting. Uh, Van Vindal, that's uh, at three minutes and 50 seconds. That's my favorite. Yaira. And... <laughs> and that's the picture of Yaira in her workout gear where she's floating above and you're you're looking up at her. Oh, by the way, he also put the drooling emoji. So um, we can only guess what he did later. <laughs> Jeremy Mason back for another comment. I'm ready to see her attitude match the looks, though. I agree. She looks like she could be an aggressive fighter. And the question that I have is, is Yaira going to be... Um, you know, is, is her attitude going to match that aggressiveness that no, cause wonder woman, you absolutely believe that wonder woman is as aggressive as, as, as she looks and acts is Yaira going to be very similar. I think, uh, we will find out Charlotte Marsh, um, uh, just please don't go with something obvious like an X 
um, or related or she's a super lesbo or anything else that forces it towards the real world. The real world sucks. Please keep everything away from realistic. That's what makes fiction awful these days. Charlotte Marsh, I absolutely agree with you. I think that, uh, you know, we should really look into how Yaira's character is going to be introduced and whether or not Yaira is going to be introduced naturally. I also kind of agree her being the ex of Isom. Um, yeah, I, I think her being like an ex-girlfriend would be, it's too on the nose, right? Like everybody could call that. I would like her to work in some different capacity. I mean, even just a, a friend from school, right? Like one of old, one of Isom's old, you know, friends from school, uh, I think she could fit into would be good. Um, Freight Train uh, says at six minutes and 23 seconds, bubbly airheads work out at the gym too, you know, bimbo lives matter. Bimbo lives do matter. But I know what you're thinking. Freight train. I, I know what you're thinking. Dirty, dirty freight train. Dirty freight train. You and your bubbly head workout bimbos. Go get them. <laughs> Verhoeven 1980 says, Yaira is our waifu. Oh, God. <laughs> gaming with stand i saw yaira at the mall she was shopping at lulamon i don't know what lulamon is i wish i knew what lulamon is so i could get that joke uh drew crew it says, maybe she's a former MMA fighter that is now an actress who is exposed to some kind of energy experiment. And I was like, hmm, I wonder where he got that idea from. Like, I genuinely didn't know. And then somebody literally comments, sounds like Gina Carano. And I was like, of course it's Gina Carano. I didn't get it. I had no idea where that came from. But I love that so many people are coming up with this. Stuff. This is a, the the Yaira the Yaira video was so great. The theory crafting video was so great. All right, <clears throat> Kyle Phillips, which he's been on the channel quite a bit, says Sheena Brokeman. Oh, because this is because I was saying that you know. Uh, uh, we need a uh, big titty goth girl representation in the Eric July comic books only because I married a big titty goth girl. Yes. Much of what you see behind me outside of some of the old collectibles that I've had from a kid, but much of what you see behind me was bought for me by a big titty goth girl who loves me. And so that's where this comment comes from. Kyle Phillips says Sheena Brokeman is my goth girl. And since her story started in 1996 as a teen, so he is a writer, by the way. Let's get clear that up. She'd be around 40 now. Hope you like mature big titty goth girls, LOL. I wrote a punk rock Halloween screenplay uh, in a video game slash comic book style. Sheena gains super strength through magic and I'm writing my second character, Reed Noble, which picks up where Sheena's story ends for now. Yaira still sounds like a metahuman, and I agree, a photon energy user, not magic. So I think I'm all right for now. Once Isom comes out, I'm sure I can tweak my story and blend it into the Ripperverse. Kyle Phillips is hoping to adapt his story in such a way that he can fit it into the Ripperverse. And Kyle Phillips is going to be that man's who introduces big titty goth girls to the Ripper universe. Let's get some. I'm excited. All right, church versus the world. I'm thinking she's pissed because maybe they ran together and when he bailed, he left her high and dry. I'm trying to start my own comics. I'm a uh, I'm a writer, but I need an artist super bad. Yeah, that's the thing is like not a lot of people are good at putting words together and writing. 
but both of those things are hugely important. So uh, oftentimes it takes at least two people. Now, sometimes you get the people that are just wickedly talented with writing and wickedly talented with drawing. And those people deserve to die in the sun and leave some success for the rest of us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was mean. I'm, that was mean. That, they deserve to be locked away for the rest of their lives and leave some success for the rest of us. You overly talented freaking hacks. I wish I were you. Oh, well. <laughs> Lucas Garrett says about Yaira. Yeah, she's waifu material. Rule 34 and bound. She's either a former girlfriend or wife or the sister of a former girlfriend or wife of Isom. I'm getting Warbird, Miss Marvel, Glory or Wonder Woman vibes from her. She also reminds me of uh, Sonya from the Mortal Kombat franchise. Yeah, see, that's something that that was an interesting point. I didn't even go to Mortal Kombat. And he also uh, he finishes up by saying, I'm looking forward to seeing who she is, what her powers and abilities are. And what her relationship with Isom is. Yeah, that's the big thing is like, how does how does Yaira fit into all this? Because obviously everybody's looking at her going, oh, she a big titty blonde woman and I like that. And I honestly covered this video simply because of the fact of how much Yaira is selling and how much Rip has talked about it. And I, I'm honestly more interested in Isom himself but the meme around this was too good. Okay, so sue me. Peer pressure. Sue me. Whatever. I have 14% sugar beer. This is sugar beer. I... This is not good. It's... It smells like a Jolly Rancher. And it... It tastes like eating spoonfuls of sugar. And that's not good because sugary beers gets you hammered. Oh, Corey Sanford. I hope Eric hires like-minded creators to bring their own to the Ripperverse. I do too. Kyle Phillips. He's in the comments. He's got to scroll down a little bit. Kyle Phillips. I hope, and I think Rip is open to this idea. He's just got to make the scratch first. But I think as long as uh, he makes the scratch to pay people well, uh, he'll do it. So Kyle Phillips, hopefully you make it, man. I'm I'm super stoked for you, dude. Like I your stories sound fun. All right. The redacted computer. Why why is the computer redacted? What did you do? Eric said it himself that he wants newcomers and fans to theorize and debate one another on what the future holds in the Ripperverse. Uh why are uh, why are seeing why why are seeing the Iron Age? Why are we? I think you meant why are we seeing the Iron Age of comics revitalization all over again? My theory is that Yaira is tied to some planet far off, and she came to warn Isom of the impending doom that uh, will visit his planet soon. You know, I never considered the alien aspect to this, and I only disagree on the alien aspect because. Rippa said he wanted to do small street crime stuff. And based off of the workout clothing that we saw, I just don't know. I, th I, I just, I don't know. I don't know if she would be from outer space. I really just don't know. Um, Yeah, I'd have to think about that one. I just, it's an inter it really is interesting though to think about because I didn't think about it, but, and I'm not saying I don't think that, that, that it would be, that that would be the case, but I just, you, you know, it'd be so funny if Rippa like told some of his team, like, hey, take some names on YouTube that like nobody knows you from and go and comment and just put out like the real things as like theories, as fan theories that they can't trace back to us because I wonder if that's happening. Like I'm legit, like just curious that that would, Oh, that'd be such a great marketing tactic. DGC. Interesting theories. I wouldn't base too much about her costume being a reflection of her wealth though. I did mention that her costume, if she was mentioned to be poor, her costume looks a little bit ritzy for a poor girl, but I, and and I yeah I, I did mention that superheroes in general seem not 
<clears throat> oh, it's terrible. Oh my god, it's terrible. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, if this is somebody's first video watching this channel, I am so sorry. Please go watch some of my better stuff. This is bad. Whatever whatever's in this can, it says it's got 14% alcohol, so it's going to get me hammered, but just go watch something else. Oh my god, that's terrible. Uh DGC Interesting theories. I wouldn't base too much about her costume being a reflection of her wealth, though. Superheroes in general seem to <clears throat> uh, not be overly restricted fund-wise when it comes to costumes or devices. Spider-Man, for example, despite being constantly broke, was able to build, maintain, and repair his web shooters. Um, I will say this. As far as I know, Spider-Man was able to do that because uh, in his college classes, he actually had access to the laboratory in a lot of the story that I know. But again, I'm a comic book student, not a comic book reader. So I could be totally wrong. Uh, Hawkeye also, even when he's not part of the Avengers and somewhat broke, always seems to have enough money to get or make some very high tech arrows. I'm still trying to figure out how Professor X was able to build and maintain the mansion, Blackbird, Danger Room, and Cerebro, despite not having a corporation behind him like Iron Man or Batman does. Okay, so Hawkeye. Hawkeye, I would say, you know, he's crafty enough. He can probably figure some things out. Professor Professor X, period, is just going up and like, you will give me money for my special kids' school and... Like, rich billionaires are like, we will give you money. And then they come out and do some, we gave money to this special school for special kids. And then they get a tax break on it. Like, billionaires will give money to anything as long as they get a tax. He might not have even needed to make the, like, the psychic stuff. He might have just been like, hey, you want a tax break, bro? And they're like, yeah. What do you need? And he's like, I need this much money. And they're like, that's a good tax break. I'll put that down. So that's how Professor X uh, funds his school, extortion of the billionaires by uh, telling them they can get tax breaks. That's, that's, <laughs> tell me, how does Professor Xavier fund that damn school? How does he do it? I never thought about that. I have never thought about that. And then DGC comes in like the people's elbow. You know who you are if you remember the people's elbow. Comes in like the people's elbow and just hits me in the head with that. And I'm just like, wait, how did Professor X fund that school? See, that's the crap you're not supposed to think about. Resistance Publishing. Yaira is going to be a breakout hit for the Ripperverse. I noticed a lot of customers talking about her and becoming quick fans. Yes, they are becoming quick fans. Absolutely. <laughs> oh no um i really do hope that people are are just genuinely intrigued into the character of yaira and not just intrigued into the rule 34 stuff but the internet is the internet and people are gonna do how people do and i just don't care as long as long as riffa does well but seriously, he needs to get on that whole, like, copywriting the Rule 34 stuff and putting out the official Yairo yeah, Rule 34 <laughs> video. <laughs> I couldn't even say that with a straight face. Oh, God. I love reading your guys' comments. This is so much fun. You guys just, what? Oh. Because you guys say things and it makes me think of stupid things. And then I say them to you and realize how stupid I am. And I realize how smart you guys are and how noble you guys are and how dirty minded I am. And I'm just like, wow, it's really not the rest of the world. It really is me. Game Jumper 520. Great theories. I do hope Yaira is an older, more <clears throat> is the older, more mature side. 
Yaira and Dysum are fighting on cover B, so I think she is going to be more of an antagonist than a hero. Question mark in parentheses. I think Isom's power is super speed. Eric had mentioned speed in the past video, so that's my guess. You know, it'd be interesting if Isom's power was super speed, and I only say that because Rippa was a track athlete in uh, high school and college, I believe. And so, because that's why he liked the Flash a lot, because he was fast in the Flash. But that would uh, uh, lend, if for some reason, Isom is, uh, uh, does have the power of super speed, that's going to give a lot of credibility to the uh, young Ripa haters who are saying that, oh, well, this is just a self-insert. And I highly doubt that. Uh, but it, I, I, it would be interesting if it was that, that was my first thought anyway. YT refugee, loveless speculation. I haven't anticipated a comic book this much in the last 20 years. And I'm loving hearing the other theories about the characters and their backstories. Looking forward to finally getting something fresh and original entertainment that is free of virtue signaling uh, intentionally insulting or attempting to tell me what to think. YT Refugee, I absolutely agree. I think it's fantastic that we're getting a story from somebody who doesn't hate us and who doesn't seem to be wanting a, to push a political message in that story. Eric Hare. Uh... The person Isom has a past uh, with uh, with between uh, San Tuan. Uh, Yaira and the Alpha Core is San Tuan. Eric uh, has this to say about Isom and San Tuan's past in the story summary on the campaign website. A man built like a tank by the name of San Tuan reappears and he's had previous confrontation with Avery. So Isom's past with one of the three that Eric hints at in the trailer is spelled out specifically in the story summary on the website. I, I, I don't disagree, but I do think that Eric, I, I, I think that there's a lot there that Eric, I think that Eric is keeping some mystery involved with a lot of the story. Um, so the, he mentions San Juan, but, and not the others. And he might, again, San Juan may be from his past. He may have history, but that might not be the character from his past that he has the, the violent altercation with. But it also could be. I don't know. I'm just speculating here. Uh, Gary Major. I can't wait for the Yaira book to come out. She's going to be the next $3 million campaign for the Ripperverse. Oh, yeah, she is. Yup. She's already his number one poster. Boy, howdy. Uh, mm, mm. Oh, you're, you're all just dirty. You're just dirty. You're all just dirty. That's what you are. All right. The next video that I am reading comments from is Eric July, The Ripperverse, PayPal and Deceptive Practices, Part 2. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Brother John Comics, he's commented a few times, and I actually really appreciate it. Uh, he says, that's how banks make money. The interest off funds that are managed. It's not just PayPal that does that. Your local credit union does the same. It's how they run. If everything were uh, time and interest free, they wouldn't make any money. Are we supposed to expect them not to make money? Um, so... This was uh, the the part two where I was I was mentioning that uh, the predatory practices of business. Now, when you put your money into a bank, the bank says, "Hey, we're going to hold your money in this bank account, but that is going to add to the money that we can make interest off of, and that's how we make interest and keep our people employed." And you go, "Yeah, that's cool." Now, when your bank calls you in a month and says, "Hey, you didn't transfer any money from your savings account to your checking account this month." So uh, you, you owe us $35 and you go, what? And they will, well, you didn't artificially move your money from our, you know, one designated number slot to our other designated number slot for you. So you owe us money. That's a predatory big business practice. That's actually why um, I told my wife to get the hell away from U.S. Bank because my wife had couple hundred dollars in her savings account 
And that couple hundred dollars in the savings account, uh, they called us back. Uh, I think she had like two hundred dollars, and they called us a few. Uh, called my wife uh, like a few years later, and they said, "Hey, you owe us money." She goes, "What do you mean?" So, well, you owe us thirty dollars. You're negative thirty dollars in your account. And she goes, "I had two hundred dollars in there. What the hell is going on?" And they said, well, you haven't made any transfers from your savings to your checking account. And we were like, uh, excuse me. Now, my bank says I can have $25 in my credit union says I can put $25 in my savings account. And it stays there. And my bank says we'll build interest off that $25 and you'll also get interest off that 20. Now they'll make whatever interest I think I'll get one or 2% off of it, whatever it happens to be over the course of time. But they'll, you know, and they'll take whatever cut they take. Cause see my credit union's honest about it. My credit union doesn't call me and say, Hey, by the way, you swiped your debit card uh, more than seven times this month. So we're going to charge you. Those are predatory business practices. Making interest in itself is not a bad thing um, at all, I think. I think, you know, the price of money is the, you know, interest. What I do think is a, a bad thing is when banks are doing these predatory business practices or when PayPal is not telling the front person up front that they're going to hold their money, make interest off of it before they deposit it into the bank account of the downstream person, right? So the upstream person gives money to PayPal as a transactionary. Hey, you take my money and give it to this person. And PayPal does not uh, transfer that money along and so on. The PayPal situation is very interesting because it seems like, uh, and everybody's like, no, Go read their uh, go read their rules. It clearly says I'm like, yeah, but if you read those rules, there's no way they can enforce those proactively. Those rules are specifically set up to be reactive. 100% reactive. Okay? When Eric signed up for PayPal, they never asked him, "Hey, are you doing a pre-order?" They never asked my wife when she ordered, "Hey, is this a pre-order item?" And my wife you know, did she had no option to be able to click yes or no. So no, this is a completely predatory practice by PayPal. Uh, Brother John Comics, thank you so much for the comment. You have been super civil uh, in in all of your commentary in all of your comments and your discussions, and I appreciate it. Jiren, the guy that almost beat Goku. Jiren says the paradigm is shifting. We the people have the power. The corrupt corporations will feel the impact of the incoming parallel economy. I agree. I absolutely agree. Sen Brisbane says they will send them the info out of order if he does discovery. Uh, it's a delaying tactic, but ultimately we know PayPal is scummy. So this is when I said if they really wanted to go to court, uh, they would have to go to Discovery and prove that um, all these other companies are uh, able to bypass this whole uh, pre-order thing. Uh, and and he's commenting on that, saying that they would send it out of order. And they may. Um, I think our court system is... On the civil side, I think our court system is relatively okay. On the criminal side, I think it needs a lot of work. But yeah, if this went to civil court, I think uh, I think Ripa could make out uh, potentially. Robot CLK. That's what I'm going with because I I have no idea what that means. I'm probably man. I'm probably saying all kinds of slurs and stuff. And you be like, you said this word, you're getting nuked. I'm like, I just I just read someone's name. This pre-sale policy thing is definitely BS. I went <clears throat> through PayPal as a processor with Kickstarter and also other companies, i.e. like Glorious, which recently I bought a uh, mouse from them, with techni which technically is a pre-sale uh, because pre-sale. Because since they are a small but good company making solid products, they can't just make produce products. Uh, Tick also doesn't want it. They want 
They want to make stuff what customers want. Oh, okay. Anyways, PayPal took my money already. And of course, it seems like the company got it because they uh, started with now the production of said product. But how they got the money, but Eric didn't is baffling. See, that's what I'm saying is this is all a retroactive thing. PayPal didn't do this until they they saw that a lot of money was transferred. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, but the PayPal thing, it's just because, uh, you know, well, they need to check for fraud. Okay, so they say, hey, your PayPal got a lot of money. Why? And he goes, here's the receipts. Here's what I'm doing. And they should say, okay, cool. They didn't. They said, oh, you're doing a pre-sale? So we're going to hold your $1.2 million, make interest off of it, and go bug yourself. And Eric July is like, I got lawyers, bitch. And we're going to see who wins. Um, so, yeah. Gaming with Stand. Back for another comment. It says, PayPal is such a dirty company. I stopped pre-orders at GameStop um, because they make money off of my money. The last pre-order I got was Injustice for the PlayStation 3. That is a long time ago, sir, and you are not allowed to date me like that. You're not. Oh, my God, it's still bad. Oh. Guys, answer me this. When you're drinking beer or alcohol, isn't it supposed to be like the more you drink, the less you taste? Oh, fuck it. I'll sip again. Oh my god. Oh. What is that? That is a terrible beer. Oh my that is something that white women mix into something else to make it taste like not what the fuck it is. That is a white woman drink. Apparently, I'm a white woman tonight. Fuck. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. 2A Oregon boy. I saw you get read out on the rip uh, on, on uh, Ripa's live stream. 2A Oregon boy. I saw it. He read your super chat. You watch Ripa. And I was like, oh, my God. I literally was watching. I was sitting in my garage and I had it on my garage TV. And I was watching... And he goes, 2A Oregon boy. And I was like, wait, what? What? I literally felt like a celebrity has, has visited my channel because I'm like, wait, somebody who watches Ripa is like watching me? Somebody who super chats Ripa is watching me? So just so you guys know, <clears throat> all of your comments here, I genuinely cannot describe to you how awesome it makes me feel. Knowing every, just the amount of energy you guys are putting in, the amount of energy, time, and, and thought that you're putting into your comments. Because energy, time, and, and, and your thought processes and working all these things out, that means something. That's time. That's money. And I appreciate all of it. To a Oregon boy. I tried to pay with PayPal first for my order, honestly, and it didn't go through. So I entered all of my info directly to the Ripperverse, and I'm glad that I did. Yeah, PayPal, they can go fuck themselves. Fuck PayPal. Freight Train is back. Great unbiased summary video spreading awareness awareness of the PayPal's problem uh, problems specifics uh, like this will speed up its resolution. Though on Tony TGD's <clears throat> other two... Uh, videos on the Ripperverse, he points out a lot of unusual issues with editorial quality control. Yeah, uh, Freight Train, I, I appreciate you commenting that, and I and you actually commented a few times, um, and I, I I just haven't had time to go look at uh, um, uh, TGD, Tony TGD's other uh, videos, so I apologize. But yeah, no, he did a great job with that one, and I highlighted it. It was fantastic. Xavier Guzman, can I just jump into the multiverse and hop into a reality where they do this kind of practices to woke companies instead? To that, I replied, Xavier Guzman, if you find that reality and you jump in, take me with you. All right, I'm going to do it again. Oh. 
That's almost as bad as an IPA. That's almost as bad as an IPA. Oh. That's as bad as Apple Crown. And for people who like Apple Crown, you're just subhuman. I just... I mean, you're cool. You can chill here. I welcome subhumans. I welcome all, but you're... And the people who like IPAs, you guys are just like hipster commies and that's almost as bad almost as bad as you people it's not as bad as you people it's almost as bad but this is really bad but i guess you people give me conversation so we're cool lucas garrett the fact is that paypal is sitting on his money collecting interests and that's a big no-no. This 20-day policy is meant for that objective. Absolutely, Lucas Garrett. And I bet good money that it is only enforced on those PayPal is targeting. Bigger names and corporations probably get a pass. So I want this to go to trial to expose this practice. Yes, sir. God, I love it when Lucas Garrett comments. Oh, the guy just has like... This mental Captain Morgan stand. You just, you think, like, the guy, he just, like, you think Lucas Garrett, and you see his profile picture, and he's just doing the Captain Morgan stand, holding, like, I don't know, the word of God on a sheet of paper, standing over his dead enemy's corpses. That's how he comments. Lucas Garrett, you are fantastic, and I appreciate you. All right, Eric, July, the Ripiverse, FOMO, and business. I don't know if I'm going to be able to... I, 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 I... Oh, God. Did it, did it freeze? What's going on here? Uh, oh, no, no, no. I just, I didn't get a lot of comments on this video because I suck. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I thought I was better than I was for a second. I, I do apologize. Sometimes my ego get... All right. Gabe Logan, the 202 fanatic. I was about to say that. I don't know what he's referencing. You should always have a drink and tell us about it. Could be coffee, tea, milk, water, beer, wine, etc. All drinks, in my opinion. So what was the brand of this drink? Uh, it's a big can. Good day to you, sir. 202 out. Get rid of mosquitoes. Yeah, so I was fighting mosquitoes in this video, and uh, the beer that I was drinking was, uh, I forget the specific name of it, but it was a pineapple sour beer from Toppling Goliath Brewery. Uh, very, very fantastic uh, sour um, beer. Uh, not like that. That This is not from Toppling Goliath. This is, this is trash garbage. This is... Toppling Goliath has some fantastic beers. So, no, that pineapple beer that I was drinking, it was, it was really great. Uh, yeah. So, I am. Do you, think it's, <clears throat> do you think it's interesting that Ripa made $3 million off of not just the comic books, but his merchandise as well? Do you think if we calculate only comic book purchases that his numbers wouldn't be competing in sales against other comics? No disrespect to Ripa. I was just thinking about everyone talking about him changing things. Ripaverse? Or hashtag Ripaverse, hashtag we will win. I am, I responded to you, and um, I think I responded to you literally at like 4.30 in the morning, right before I was ready to jump into the shower, so you can have that mental image in your head. Uh, no, I think that a large portion of what was purchased was comic books. Um, I can only use myself as the um um the analogy here i personally believe that because i ordered two books i got one signed and one unsigned and so using myself as the analogy here i think that most people probably bought it two comic books I know a lot of people bought more and a lot of people bought less, but let's just use me as the, I bought two. I bought 
cover A and cover B. And I believe cover... My wife said cover B was signed and cover A... Was, I, I can't remember. Because uh, my, my wife totally surprised me with it. She's like, hey, I bought these for you. I was like, oh, I love you, baby. But um, using myself as the analogy here, most... I would say people bought two. So two comic books by 30,000 people. Guy moved a lot because he has 60 or he has 30 some odd thousand orders. I don't, I don't know if that's a products ordered or if he's doing by person, but either way, I mean, even if you knock off 30% for people who just bought cards and a poster or whatever, I mean, the guy's still, still beating any of the Marvel comics period. Um, so I am. Thank you so much for that comment. <clears throat> um, uh, oh, oh no. Oh no. What's it doing? Okay. Nathaniel Lee. If I dis, <clears throat> if I decide to order this, uh, for me, it's about the art first and the story last, which have been impressing me more and more. Uh, also it's, uh, not about who gets the book first in my opinion. It's about another individual that's into the same love of comics like myself and many others who is making history like Indiegogo comic creators who feel the same way Eric July does. Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the obviously FOMO, uh, FOMO done right. Um, and how Eric July said that he wanted to move back his, his date of shipping so that way everybody could get their comics closer together so that way people could kind of all experience it within a close time frame. Understanding that the fear of missing out is a big part of the comic book community. People aren't walking into stores and they can only get it in stores on Wednesdays. No, he's shipping this out and everybody's going to be getting it at a different time. So him condensing his time period for people to get it, I think is a great business practice. Now for Nathaniel Lee, he's like, dude, it's only about the art and the story first. And he's kind of like, you know what? It's just about other people who enjoy it with me, not necessarily if they get it in the same time frame with me. And that may be a thing, Nathaniel Lee. And uh, I, I, you know, and, and that may be a thing for a lot of other people as well. All right. We are moving on to Obi-Wan Kenobi is by, and here's why. Man, I haven't done a lot of videos this week, but you guys comment a lot. I am not going to be able to do this forever. If for some reason you guys are just like, hey, a drink with crazy, we're going to blow your channel up to a ridiculous level. Uh, I don't know if I will be able to do this once a week with all the videos. We'll see. I'm having a hard time now. I am at 47 minutes right now. Gaming with Stand back again. The grooming, uh, they are grooming kids that are reading the books. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Um, yeah, Disney is a trash garbage to your company. Uh, Sonny Kim. You need a P.O. box so we can send you a six-pack. Okay, so, like, if I got a P.O. box and was like, hey, guys, send me six-packs or send me beers as long as, like, it's legal in my state, would you guys send me six-packs or send me beers? Like, and I would drink them. I, I, please don't send me IPAs, but if you do send me IPAs, I would still drink them. But, and also, don't send me bad beers because you know that, like, because this is not good. But my wife bought it for me, and I will be grateful to her for drinking it. I will also tell my wife, baby, please don't get it again. Oh, it doesn't get better. Why do I do that to myself? But yeah, Sunny Kim, I might get a P.O. box and... Maybe you guys can send me beers. I, I don't know. I I will look into that. Everybody let me know in the comments. Mega Man X. Oh, Mega Man. Oh, Mega Man X. That was a really good. I like. I grew up with that cartoon when I was a kid. Don't care. You can shut up. I liked that cartoon. 
that the original Mega Man. I don't care. It's not what I asked. Star Wars died as soon as Lucas sold it. This thing Disney is parading around is nothing but a pale, corporate, soulless imitation. Yeah, I... I have never seen a single Disney-produced Star Wars production. Since Disney has owned Star Wars, I I have... Uh, I've not watched anything, save one time I put on the Phantom Menace on DVD that I have in my house that I bought from eBay before Disney bought everything uh, to show my kids because, Dad, Star Wars this, Star Wars that, and I showed them the Phantom Menace, and that's the only thing that I've watched since Disney bought. I can't watch Star Wars anymore. That, that, That genuinely broke my heart what they did um star wars was star wars was my my thing i grew up with dragon ball z i grew up with batman the animated series i grew up with with justice league and static shock and Spider-Man the animated series and the X-Men the animated series and but Disney ruined the one thing that I just found hopeful and I hated it so before I start crying like a bitch I'm gonna move on I want to love Star Wars again I do and I haven't seen, uh, I watched one thing that was Star Wars. We had Disney Plus for a while. And I watched the Luke Skywalker scene in the, of The Mandalorian. That's it. That's all I watched. I literally went to that episode, scrolled past everything. And that's the only thing Disney Star Wars that I've consumed. Because I just wanted to see it. It doesn't fix anything that they did with it, but damn it. I wish I wish Star Wars wouldn't have been ruined. I really do. And I've just been wanting to say that to people for a long time, man. I wish Star Wars would have been untouched. <clears throat> I am. In my opinion, when Family Guy's Herbert was Obi Wan in their parody, it was f- in their parody. It was funny. Uh, it applied for their uh, parody, but Hollywood just goes off the rails, and it's mad annoying. Yeah, it is. Sunny Kim again. Canonically, uh, Kenobi like Kenobi like chicks uh, would have left the Jedi Order for. I I forget her name. C- cries. I, I forget her name. I don't care anymore. Uh, and also, these weirdos get off on ruining the things we love. They talk shit about all uh, about it all the time. Yep, you're right. Lucas Garrett coming back. <clears throat> For me, the only Star Wars that matters is anything before 2008. The rest led to the nonsense we are seeing coming from Lucas film under the Disney ownership ownership. So I don't consider it canon. It didn't work for me when they uh, did this nonsense to Bobby Drake Iceman or Tim Drake Robin. Yeah, they fucked those characters over bad. Yeah, Lucas Garrett. Yeah, they did. And it's not working now. The original intent of the character from the original writer is uh, is what I consider to be canon. That's my two cents on the matter. Great video. Keep up the outstanding work. Thank you, Lucas Garrett. I... For all of you out there who just are checking this out, thank you. Danny Schaefer, and I believe if this is the same Danny Schaefer I'm thinking of, I know you, and I went to high school with you. I never will look at him as bi, especially for Annie. Uh, He has had relationships with a woman, would have left the Jedi Order for her, but I will always look at Kenobi as Annie, 
and Annie's relationship as brotherly as a brotherly one. Kenobi, Kenobi even says it in number three. You were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. And Danny Schaefer, you're 100% right. And that's actually what I used on the cover here. That was that scene. That's, that, that's why I used the thumbnail that I used. Absolutely. All right. All right, this is the last one, and this is a big one. Oh, boy, howdy. Why do you guys comment to me so much? Why do you... I don't... I never... I didn't know what it was like to be loved. And you guys are loving me. Thank you. <clears throat> I am respond commenting again. Anybody not covering the biggest... And this is, um. by the way... Uh... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Eric July, the Ripperverse, destroys Bleeding Cool by being great. That is the one that we are talking about right now. Uh, so I am. Anybody not covering the biggest comic book startup uh, story in our immediate history that could impact generations moving forward is definitely shilling, LOL. But seriously, Ripperverse deserves more press especially from comic book YouTube channels. Imagining how many people are still <clears throat> settling on the... Oh, my God. That beer is destroying my voice. <clears throat> what is in that? Fuck it, I'll take this one. It doesn't get any better. I don't know why I keep doing that to myself. Imagining how many people are <clears throat> still settling on MCU and DC trash makes my stomach hurt. LOL. I am. Thank you so much for commenting. Matt's take on the ancients. Congrats on Eric making an alternative to super lefty comics. He saw a problem and instead of bitch, he made an alternative. Uh, let the market decide, and Eric is a libertarian. He's an anarcho-capitalist, not a libertarian. There's a difference. Fight me. I will I will fight that point all day. Anarcho-capitalists and libertarians can work in the same direction from where we are right now. They do want a different end goal. Brother John Comics back for another, and this is a long one, and I like when he comments because he... Brother John Comics is very thoughtful. He's only done a couple of comments on this channel, but he's very thoughtful about it, and I I really do appreciate this. And I, I, I mean that sincerely. <clears throat> and this is, this is funny. The way he started this off was funny, and I think he's trying to play around. Uh, because I'm, I'm reading an article in this video talking about another article in the video, right? And so... Uh, and I'm about to do some more of this. <clears throat> this is some inception level stuff here. You're reporting on an on a news site, reporting on another news site, not doing the stories the smaller news sites want. This is like me reporting my local sports anchor being upset. ESPN doesn't cover enough soccer. Also, I want to clear uh, I wasn't clear near the end on uh, I wasn't clear on who the end you were talking about getting salty. Because they don't have his audience. Are you under massive fire because they are not uh, covering the story or because they are getting salty? This is manufactured for clicks. A vocal but small group is not a massive fire. Okay, so based, um, okay, so let's answer a couple things there. One, uh, this is even more inception level because Brother John comics. I am reading your comment, commenting on your comment, which is commenting on my video, which is commenting on the article that was commenting on another article <laughs> that was talking about the Ripperverse in a negative light. So welcome to Inception Level 5. We get real here. Get you some. But... Uh, what I was saying at the end is just uh, all of the people who are against Eric July and who are trying to spread uh, a narrative about him and people like us 
who just truly just want good storytelling. Again, those are the people who are salty to see success from people who just have intentions of, hey, I want to put out a good story and make some money. That's it. Uh, they don't like the good story. They don't like the money aspect of it, and they're jealous of people who do. And that's it. So those are the people who are salty. As far as the small uh, vocal group, um, a, a vocal but small group is not a massive fire. So you uh, obviously in the comic book space, that is a very niche thing still. And so what you have to understand is although it is a small but vocal group, it is the group for that website. So it's like, well... Only five people were commenting on this website about their poor decisions. And it's like, and you look at it and you go, yeah, but those are like the only five people that go to that website who like what that website did before. And then that website did something different. And those five people were like, you know, da fuck, bro. Like, this is what I came here for. Like, so it, it, it's basically that. Also, to finish Brother John Comics... Also, I freely admit this is my own ignorance to the process, but wouldn't this still be crowdfunded? I mean, the man has raised $3 million uh, within pre-orders. That's impressive, but it's money from a crowd, right? Uh, he just didn't use a third-party crowdfunding site as a website, a brilliant move, but it still seems like a crowdfunding initiative since it's not direct exchange of money uh, in handing, uh, getting the product in hand, self-funded to me would pay for the number of books out of your own pocket, then sell them. But then again, I admit the lack of knowledge on this category. So brother, John comics did such, such a fantastic thing here. He goes, look, I don't know what's going on, but it sounds like a crowdfund brother, John comics. No, he actually did pay for the books up front, right? Um, at least like the first stage of books, right? He paid, he took, he, he went to the printer and says, here's a whole bunch of money. We're going to print some books. Um, so he did pay for the books out of pocket. He did not expect for $3 million worth of stuff to come in. So he probably, so he paid for the books out of pocket for at least the, uh, the, the, the first, the first hoorah, let's say, and then did not expect the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth hurrahs to come in. And so he probably ran back to the printers and said, hey, more people want this stuff. Here's more money. Get it out. So it was uh, a self-funded comic. This wasn't a crowdfund. But I'm so glad to have somebody here who is like, hey, I'm not sure about the whole subject here. Maybe I'm wrong because, dude, I'm wrong all the time about stuff, and I will admit it here. Uh, and that's all I want to be able to do. If I get something wrong, call me out on it, and and that's and I will read those comments. Like if I'm, I mean, if it's a video that I did two years ago, I'm probably not gonna read the comments on that one. But if it's a video that I did within the last week, I can comment on it and correct it. Or if somebody says, "Hey, correct this thing on Twitter," we are on Twitter, so. Brandon period X Rippa out there doing work Rippa's out there doing work yes one and only RJ look forward to seeing your channel grow thank you so much one and only RJ we are at 400 subscribers I think like 402 last time I checked it actually you know what let me see where we're at right now Because I am unsure. All right. So. Four hundred and two subscribers because of all of you fantastic people. <clears throat> Rockaway Rob, congrats on your channel. Thank you so much, Rockaway Rob. I, I'm i still just losing it. 2A Oregon Boy, good vid. I usually stick with double IPAs myself. Sir, you are a hippie commie. Okay? The only people that enjoy IPAs are hipsters, and hipsters are just communists. So, you know, have fun with that. If you would like to know what an IPA beer tastes like, 
go outside, find a pine cone, and lick that until the taste of the pine cone goes away, and that's what an IPA tastes like. But to a Oregon boy, you're cool. I still like you. Although you like to drink that commie beer. It's fine. It's fine. I get it. I get it. You're a commie. Kind of. Or you have commie taste. We'll just say that. You have commie taste. Get you some commie taste. Because IPAs are for commies. (laughs) Gabe Logan. 202 is very happy. Thumbs up. Uh, That is the 202 fanatic. I cannot believe he's going for that. Gabe, thank you. That just... Uh, Jay says, so you don't see color because I was reading the article and they called, uh, Eric July an African American. And I said, no, I said, no, he's not an African American. He's just an American. Uh, and, um, go. All right, sweetheart, go get ranch. Okay. My daughter has to go into our pantry here and get ranch. So, here's the thing. What I was saying by that, I don't care about race. There is one human race. Scientifically speaking, race in the genealogy. I love you too, sweetheart. In the genealogy, race, there's one human race. That's it. I don't care about someone's skin color. Dude, I'm a construction worker. Most of the people I work with are not the same skin tone as me. And you know what? Most of those people would be anybody out there any day of the week and how hard they work, the sweat they pour off their brow, and the passion that they put into all the things that they do. And guess what? They ain't pasty white like me. And I respect those men. One of the people who taught me how to be a better man ain't. Pasty white like me. In fact, multiple people. God rest his soul, a man who actually brought me up when I was young in the industry that I was in. A Native American man. He lost his life to cancer, sadly. He was a good man. But I'd never give a shit. But he always used to tell these jokes. <laughs> he said, "Hey, hey, you know what a man? Hey, you know what a man with a six? Or he said, you know what a man with a twelve-inch penis eats for breakfast? No, I don't. He said, well, I don't know what you eat, but I eat a pound of bacon and six eggs for breakfast every morning. <laughs> and he was a good man." And he wasn't me. He wasn't white as me. And I'm so fucking sick of people bringing up this surface level bullshit. I have known so many great people in my life who aren't a Heinz 57 blend of the whitest shit on the planet like I am. Damn it, they're hard workers, and they're good people, and they have a beer with you, and they don't care. And if you needed a buck for lunch, they'd give it to you. And if you locked your keys in your car, guess what? Locked my keys in my car one time at work, and my boss, who wasn't a white man, he was a Mexican guy, he said, hey man, I'll help you out. And he paid for a freaking locksmith to come up while I was at work to get my fucking keys out of my car. So fuck you people who all you see is color. You're fucking trash. You're fucking trash if all you see is color. And you don't see people. Jay, I know that's not what you're saying because I had a conversation with you. This is something that's important to me, and it pisses me off. The greatest, some of the greatest people 
because you know my dad he's obviously pasty white like me and i consider my dad one of the greatest but some of the greatest people i have ever met in my life are not my fucking skin tone but they are my race because there is one human race that's it you ain't got to share my color but you are my race we are all the human race Thank you guys so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. Sorry to end that on a serious note, but damn it. I think this trash beer is affecting me, or I just needed to get that off my chest. But thank you guys so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy, and I look forward to seeing you all next time right here. So until next time, cheers. Oh, God, it's still bad. Oh, my God. It's like if Taco Bell made beer. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.